Premium Blend features in-depth conversations with top executives in E&P, finance, A&D, and technology, exclusive to oil and gas investor subscribers. Explain how you contain costs within the organization. I think what you're asking about is internal costs around G&A, lease operating expense, the things that our employees really have their hands on every day. And so we, um, we set out early on to make sure that we had right-sized our organization. Uh, we had dropped from a peak of about $320 million a year in G&A to currently about $150 to $160 million uh, per year. And the 320 was per year. Um, We've also worked hard to reduce or optimize the size of the company. So we had about 1,350 employees at the peak. We're about 650 employees today. And that feels about right for where we're at and where we're headed going forward. What are you doing differently to contain costs in the oil field services area? One of the decisions we made early on, uh, specifically around stimulation, was in regards to decoupling the frac services. And so this was something we did really in the trough of the market to make sure that we had the best opportunities for pricing. And so we asked the service providers, namely the stimulation companies, to provide horsepower only. We also went directly to the sand mines, kind of around the country, understood what their capabilities were, how much sand they could provide, and the quality of that sand. And then similar, similar conversations with the uh, chemical providers to make sure that we had uh, the right chemicals, the right availability, and the cost to get it to location. And so you add all that up, we provide kind of the logistical support and pull all that together, and that's proven to be really, really cost effective. And then also, I think it's very, um, it allows us to be much more predictive on our costs going forward. Are specific data available concerning WPX's own installed gathering system? That's one area of improvement we have in the Permian Basin that I'm really looking forward to seeing trickle in over time. Uh, our lease, op lease operating expense uh, is really the field guys, the roads, the chemicals, um, water, those kind of costs are pretty challenging in some regards. And so I see a ton of opportunity there. And one of the things that we can do to support our guys in the field is to allow that the oil sales to directly happen through a meter into a pipe without that intervention of them having to go uh, change tanks, get the tanks situated just right, call the truck, make sure that the truck showed up, and then you know just go through the logistics of that. I can tell you that works okay, the more manual version, when you're at a lower oil rate and you're bringing on smaller wells. Uh, we're now bringing on much larger wells than we had ever seen before. Uh, thousand barrel a day wells are very, very common and that means a lot of logistics. I can tell you, as the activity ramps up in the Permian Basin, the requirement for trucks will go up substantially, and that could have limiting effects on our ability to continue our growth activity. And so we wanted to make sure that we had um, essentially an automated process where that production flows right into the pipe, goes straight to market, requires a lot less human intervention, and very importantly, a lot less trucks on the roads uh, to keep track of. How does your strategy in the San Juan and Williston basins different from that in the Delaware Basin? So both of those basins are more mature than the Delaware Basin. Uh, the San Juan has been around for a long time. We've had a bit of a renaissance. We've uh, really we brought our rigs down from three and then two and then one to the point that we stopped all activity. We reset the bar internally and we, as we've gotten back to work, those wells are now competitive with the Delaware Basin. Uh, real happy with the work that we're doing there. There's a scale limit to it, uh, and that really comes in from a permitting process and our own internal inventory that will never see the scale and the size in San Juan that we do in the Delaware Basin. So it's a great addition, but it's not the organization that we could really build WPX around. In the Williston Basin, much more mature basin, uh, I would say the, the rate of change there is a lot slower. Uh, we have less uh, hyperinflation from the sense that there's so many rigs coming in, but what we do have there is inflationary pressure because the number of service companies that have left the basin is really putting uh, scarcity pressure on some of those services.
To stay up to date on the most recent heart energy videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking here.